doesn't have an oil dipstick. I would love to pull out a dipstick now and smell on it and look at it. No? Yes. Oh, look. The, what? the oil cap doesn't say 5W Dumbass on wow. it. Wow. Okay. Does it say that also on your discovery? Yeah, it doesn't say anymore. Here's the oil cap, how it usually looks like. It says 5W Dumbass. On the and, discovery screen. Yeah, and it doesn't here. So Land Rover already kind of went halfway. Maybe we should take that 5W Dumbass off <laughs> our oil filter again. That's what I looked like early in the morning. Look what just came here. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Another dumb idea. <laughs> it was delivered by the ADAC to a workshop nearby. And we got to go there and pick it up. Uh, of course, it doesn't drive. Of course not. I mean, it's discovery. <laughs> Didn't you see it? <laughs> Look what we did. It's a mall crawler. Gonna get out. Oh, that's Marcel. <laughs> Luckily, it still had enough battery to open the parking brake. There is an emergency lever. I poked this thing so the car is now in neutral and we can get it onto the truck here. So, this car broke down in Switzerland. The owner is from Germany and he wants to sell it. And he contacted us and we bought it. So it's like the German Mets off-road, except for a mall crawler. Oh my God, look at that here. So if you're in limp mode, you don't have that clearance you need to get towed. Never seen that before, a cover for the spare tire. So we're gonna follow the tow truck home to our house and unload the vehicle. And then we can take the first look because we bought this vehicle completely unseen. We have no information about it whatsoever, other than an email from the seller. So that's the first time for me following a new to me vehicle on a tow truck. <laughs> and I know all the Toyota drivers gonna say now the car is in its natural habitat. <laughs> You're and gonna find out all about that discovery. It's pretty interesting. That's why I agreed to purchase it. Agreed? It's... You told me go ahead and do it. Yes, actually, I told him to go ahead and get that car because we need a project car. We need something to work on. I'm so excited and I'm looking forward to work on that car. Unfortunately, behind every discovery with a major engine failure you can buy out there is a completely devastated owner or a devastated family. The same on this car. So I don't really have a huge smile in my face right now because I still have to meet the owner who bought this car new um, beginning of 2017 and then he drove it for about 60,000 kilometers. So he used it only occasionally. And on his last vacation trip to Switzerland or at least in Switzerland, he had, or his wife had... That's even worse. Yeah, you know? his wife and the kids had a major engine failure. And they had to abort the vacation, get all their stuff out, get a rental car and drive home. And the vehicle remained in Switzerland and now got towed back to Germany by the ADAC. So that's a quite devastating story. And then the owner contacted me per email because of our YouTube channel asking me what to do. And of course, I get this question a lot. There are basically two directions you can go if you experience a major engine failure. One direction is you fix the car yourself if you have the time and technical competence to do this. This is one clear thing and my advice is go ahead and do it. This is definitely financially the smallest impact. The other route is you're gonna have to get the car fixed. And if you take a discovery like this to Land Rover, the repair cost in Germany right now, including the new engine, is 28,000 euros. The dealership where he got it from actually told him 30. That's the highest I've heard so far. The lowest I've heard from Land Rover was 22,000, but that was three years ago before COVID. So I think the prices went way up because the engine availability as new is nearly zero right now. So 
the owner explored this and he came back relatively quickly um, giving me his trade-in value um, and that's when Vera told me go ahead take the vehicle then we got a nice project car in a very very good condition yeah even though we did not see the car before by talking to the owner I realized that this car was a family member and I kind of thought okay the way he talks about the car and the way he loves it and his wife loves the car this is gonna be a good buy and there is not gonna be any damage on the vehicle and it's not gonna be mistreated or anything so I bought it without seeing a single picture he did send me the options list from Land Rover so I could see if it is an SE and how it is equipped and what options it got um, and I realized quickly this is a really nice vehicle so that's a little bit the story behind it and but we don't actually know what's really wrong with the car if we just find out it's a minor thing and we can handle it easily he's gonna get his car back and we just fix it yeah that's the agreement yeah. I have with him we're not gonna take a car in for the failed engine trade-in value and then figure out that this was an exceptional good deal because all we had to do is reboot the ECU. We're not gonna do that. You're gonna find out what we've discovered when we inspect the vehicle in detail. It was at Land Rover in Switzerland and they diagnosed the major engine failure. You're only gonna get the cliff notes in this video. We're gonna take the fuel filter out and we're gonna, I'm sorry. The oil filter. I we're gonna take the oil filter out and we're gonna try to turn the crankshaft. That's all we're gonna do. And based on that, everybody can make up his opinion, what's wrong with the engine. And in the next video, we're gonna reveal the detailed diagnosis. You know, Christian, I remember when we first took out Fabian's oil filter, there were, there were no chips in the oil filter. They were all in the sump. So just because we're gonna take out a clean oil filter doesn't mean there's nothing in the sump but as you guys all know taking the sump out on a discovery for is a major pain yeah <laughs> so that might take so a while so here we're gonna pass now the tow truck because he's following us to our house yeah i know a little bit about the failure mode how the vehicle died like i said it was driven by the owner's wife okay and the kids and he told me the car died on the autobahn there at 120 kilometers an hour and he didn't make it sound very spectacular which lets me assume that his wife didn't make it sound very spectacular to him so i think the engine just stalled it just died you know there was no oil no smoke no major engine rattling there was no shutter in the vehicle nothing like that that's what we have to do now we have to unload him here and oh my god if you're in limp mode all the way down look at that philip can you film i think i need to get the money I got my recovery gear all prepped. Not? No, we're gonna use mine. Oh. <laughs> I will give you proper man's off-road discovery instructions. Use my car and we use the trailer hitch and we link it to the tow. You're gonna drive my car. You're gonna let me coast down backwards. Ah, uh, no. Then you're gonna drive in here. No. That's off-road discovery quality. Now I got myself painted in a corner. Hmm. Okay, the 2CV went by like nothing. <laughs> yeah. Let me explain how I understood it. Then we hook each other up and then we back down. And then I'll go all the way in here. So you gave yourself the Matt's off-road discovery Exactly, because, because I'm... My instruction was unclear. A discovery has a proper recovery hook. So Philip's going to be our cameraman today. <laughs> and you let me roll back until I honk my horn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
his car doesn't go anywhere without his keys. Holy shit, first it was this year. You can back this car up on the grass. I realized it that my instruction was way too complex. But I wasn't allowed to talk. <laughs> I cannot believe that we have two mall crawlers. Okay, I'm gonna stop the camera now and breathe for a second. I'm missing the power <laughs> Oh, no power steering, no power brakes, nothing. Okay, the first thing we got to do is hook up a battery charger. It's a 2016 Discovery 4, originally a five-seater. They made it into a seven-seater. And guess what? It has the same seats as my Discovery 3, which is incredible. And they were kind of preppers too you know they have oil they have tools it has add blue it's the first car we ever owned with add blue it has a safety lock nut i hope they have the adapter oh my god if you have a discovery which doesn't go into park because you have the neutral emergency release lever pulled the car never turns off it keeps saying in the display charge battery, not in park, and so on. So it keeps consuming energy and it did this now for probably two weeks. So I think the battery is dead, even so that's a brand new battery. What we're gonna do now is take out the oil filter. Like you're supposed to do when you buy a Land Rover Discovery 4. Engine failure or no engine failure, you gotta take out your oil filter and check it out. So I suspect that there might be not even a chip in there now because the car stalled before there was really some serious metal contaminating the oil pump getting back into the filter, but we'll see. There is light. Okay. So. Nothing as I suspected. There is nothing. That matches, I want to say, the description of the owner's wife because the car stalled suddenly. If it stalled suddenly, there was no time to generate a bearing failure and then, you know, bring the chips up into the oil pump. I've just given you guys my humble opinion, okay? I don't know anything about cars according to these Facebook groups. Oh yeah. Um, in the UK, I'm, I'm a complete clown and I'm a dumbass. A stupid child, also what you've been called. Yeah, there are no chips inside the filter. We went through it. Absolutely nothing. But it was on Fabian's car the same. There were no chips in the filter yes. because that got our hopes up. Yeah, the you know? chips were all in the oil pan. But yeah. Unfortunately, on a Discovery 4, there is no taking out the oil pan in two minutes. That's yeah, I told major that. Job. Yeah. Does the crankshaft still turn or not? So let's get the car up on the hoist and turn that crankshaft. Oh my god. If we don't run out of daylight. The car is in no position yeah. to roll onto the lift. No, I'm just going to roll it right in position, right on the spot. It's you sure? It's Our driveway is in an incline, so... Oh my god. Do you think that's enough? That was the most difficult part. Hit that button and not stumble over Christian. <laughs> Up until I say stop. Bump it down one more time. Bump it up. Because it's already dark because I had to waste all my time in stupid teams meetings. <laughs> So we picked up the car during lunch break. Remember, if it tumbles over, you gotta jump away into the... Okay, that's for now high enough. It got brand new tires on. Yeah. I mean, whenever I point out now these positive things, remember, 
that there is somebody really devastated. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, but we so. are gonna also have all the work okay. and the risk. We have the risk. Yeah, we because the the if work. the block is wasted, <laughs> whoa. If the block is wasted, it will be even difficult for us to get a good deal out yeah. of this. It will be a mm. lot of work. I think about 150 to 250 hours. At least we'll have content. Or why I wanted a project car. Because earlier today I didn't even remember the word limp mode because my trusty Discovery 3 just does not go into limp mode. The most reliable discovery on the planet. Any oil? Oh, nice. No. no oil? Good enough. So we're removing this little cooler here to gain access to the crankshaft bolt. Yeah. I got my breaker bar on the front pulley wheel from the crankshaft and I can push it as hard as I want in this direction. No movement. And as hard as I want in this direction, no movement. There is also no wiggling in the front pulley wheel, okay? It's not wiggling back and forth, not even by a tenth of a millimeter. So it's rock solid. No chips in the oil filter, engine locked up, front pulley wheel not wiggling. Write us in the comments what you think the engine failure of that vehicle is and what caused it. And the one who is closest to it going to get a sticker and a patch from us for free. Of course, you also need to be the first one. And I will be the judge, okay? And you will, will find out in three months. Not Vera. <laughs> well, actually, you will find out in a few videos down the road. And then you know. Um, on the weekend, we're going to have to drive up to the cellar and close the paperwork on this vehicle, collect some stuff what is still missing, and also return the stuff which was in the vehicle. Hopefully this will be an interesting video series in future, fixing this vehicle completely so it's back on the road. And we want to thank our Patreons a lot for their continuous support. They make these videos possible. And... We'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> Good. So it's not fair if you give any clues. <laughs> I've seen dead engines. <laughs> yeah, you've seen dead <laughs> engines before, okay? <laughs> so here, we're going to charge it overnight. Hopefully that battery is going to recover. The it's, by there. the way, 30 years old. Yeah, but that is not the right charger for an AGM battery. By the way, the Land Rover shop where this vehicle is from is the same Land Rover authorized dealer as our other mall crawler. This yeah. mall crawler had the transmission failure which we bought and it turned out to be an oil leak in the casting if you watch those videos so that's what that shop screwed up on this one and i gotta be really interested when we take this land rover maintained vehicle from the same dealership what we find the world is so small <laughs> so unfortunately we can take it out for a spin and a test drive i would really love to we do that now <laughs> to take it out for a spin i guess the owner would have not sold it to us yeah oh my god now if you want to make your statement on what the problem with this vehicle is what you suspect you have to be precise okay if you just flat out say oh it got a snapped crank or oh it got a bearing failure if another person comes in and says well i think it had this and then that and then it cost this and then that and all of this is correct that person will of course get the sticker or the patch so you need to be accurate just don't drop there one liner or oh, snapped crank done should have gotten a toyota you can do that but then your chances are kind of low and it's less interesting for the others to read but we also do not know we do not know of course not yeah it so christian doesn't good. give any clues no. because he doesn't know yeah, we know. just I'm, give I'm tips um, we're gonna try to get that body off and the engine out as quickly as possible and reveal it. Oh, we're gonna spend a thousand bucks on an engine lift. Oh, I can go order that now. Can, oh my god. Go upstairs and order it. Don't have that much money anymore. <laughs> okay, it's getting too dark. The footage is all gonna be messed up. 